Hey everybody, this is Tony and I'm here today with a special guest, Miss Monique Nicole. How are you doing today? I'm good, Tony. How are you? I'm doing just fine. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, of course, Monique, you're an artist, um, you know, a singer, you know, a great singer, I should say, um, <laughs> that you. a lot of people probably may not have heard of, but uh, I'm glad that you're here today so we can talk about some of your music. Uh, you know, your background, your career, stuff like that. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to know, you know, what's been going on with you and how have you been doing in the midst of the pandemic and everything? Uh, and how has that affected you so far? Oh, wow. Um, I'm doing great. I'm healthy, first and foremost. My family's yes. healthy. So everything else is pretty much secondary. But um, as far as how it's affected my music career, it has affected it greatly in a adverse way, of, <laughs> of course. I mean, not being able to get out and and do shows mm -hmm. and actually connect with people, um, you know, face to face, you know, it, it's hard. Um, you know, releasing a, a single in the middle of a pandemic yeah. and not being able to go to MTV or go to BET and do in-studio interviews or you know, performances and, you know, things that will help to propel and market your your product, you know, the things mm -hmm. that you have to do as far as your media and, and everything is Zoom or, you know, some other type of medium that you're not being able to really show or showcase, you know, the entirety of, you know, who you are musically. So it, it's tough not being able to travel and I was supposed to be in Europe and Spain and, you know, other places. And, yeah. you know, a lot of things had to be put on the shelf due to COVID. So, um, I mean, it, it's what it is. You just have to navigate a little differently and do what you can. So the things that I could do, I, I did, you know, right, virtually. Right. Yeah, you can only mm -hmm. do what's in your control. That's, that's exactly that's but and mm -hmm. and uh, just so people know, you are from Brooklyn, uh, New York, right? I am. Yeah, I am yeah, I'm okay. from Brooklyn, New York, originally. Yes. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. now, of course, you got your single that you put out uh, that you were talking about, uh, "Red Bottoms and Lingerie" this year. Yeah. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about that uh, and how that came to be. Uh, the remix that's out uh, also features the rapper Lil Flip. Uh, of course, everybody probably should know Lil Flip by now. Um, so talk to me about yes, the single indeed. and how it uh, came to be. And then how did you two uh, end up getting together for the remix of the song? Well, the song actually was just like, it, it's a slight remix, but he was on it originally. So okay. there was never a version without him. It's just that they changed the music up a little bit. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and had it remastered and re-released. -re um, okay. Just a little, we just freshened it up a bit. But anyhow, um, the record was brought to me by my management and um, it was written by Ray Lavender and produced by the Scott Cousins out in Atlanta. And um, I loved the record when I heard it. It was a lot different from anything that I've done previously. So I was, right. um, anyone that knows me knows I'm up for a challenge. So, um, you know, we got in the studio, we recorded it in, in Atlanta and then we were all kind of debating my brother and my management mm -hmm. who should we put on it and originally my manager was saying a female and i was like no i think a, a guy would be like better so that we can go back and forth right, and talk, right. he could talk about you know i guess the dynamic of what he wants from his woman in red bottoms and lingerie and vice versa so um, he was like, all right, well, what about Little Flip? You know, there was a few like New York women rappers that we were discussing back and forth. And I was like, okay, he's dope. Um, <laughs> and he reached out to his management and, you know, he sent the verse in. He freestyled that verse as he does everything. And that's what we got. <laughs> okay. So that's, that's pretty much the story behind that. Nice. And I understand that a music video is supposed to come out soon. Is there a release date for that yet? It's been out. It's been all over BET. Oh, MTV, okay. Everywhere. Yeah, it's been out months ago. It dropped okay. a while ago. It, it aired on um, BET and MTV starting Mother's Day. Okay. And 
it went right through the summer. All right. Yeah. Okay. So you've been mm -hmm. you've been working hard anyways. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. But you know what? I looking at your story and reading your story, I really loved it because it wasn't like one I had read before, uh, or even heard before, I should say. Um, mm -hmm. so I want to talk a little bit, um, uh, about that, you know, and, and how you got into, um, the industry, uh, or, or becoming a singer professionally, I would say, uh, cause you've kind mm -hmm. of been in the industry a while now. Um, but you've been singing since you were a little girl, but you just recently started, you know, getting into your career as, you know, fully as you want to now. Um, right. so talk to me about what that transition was like going into music fully uh, from what you were doing, because you were in law enforcement, if I um, understand. Right. That. And while I was in law enforcement and previous to law enforcement, I was artist management. I owned recording studios, mm -hmm. you know, production company. So I'm a concert promoter still currently. Um, so I was always, you know, in music, <laughs> but behind the scenes. And in 2015, I decided I didn't want to manage any more artists because it, it can get a, a bit much, you know, because yeah. everybody is not as disciplined. And um, it's like, oh, I don't want to do that anymore. Let me invest in myself because mm -hmm. I, I could sing, so why not? Right. So um, I went in the studio myself and my brother, well, he's not my blood brother, but uh, Michael Westbrooks. <laughs> We um we did that record say yes and mm. that was my first radio single back in 2015 and my commercial radio single and that's what put me on the map and it was a nice start to drop your first single and then actually wind up having it play around the world yeah. and commercially here in the United States um so that that's where it began and from 2015 to now. I've just been dropping singles and, and working and, you know, doing shows and that brings you up to present day. But simultaneously, I was in law enforcement as a detective sergeant on the Nassau County Police Department. Mm -hmm. And um, I worked in the detective division. That's why I had the designation of detective and sergeant, which meant that I supervised detectives and investigations and um patrol officers they they do a different type they do the preliminary investigation and then if it's a felony or it's something or they can't find the person it comes up to the detectives to put the pieces together I'm sure you are guys watch all that <laughs> CIS stuff and so pretty much that so you know that that I did for for many years and then I retired this past April 22nd and decided to just you know just focus on my music mm -hmm. okay well congratulations on the retirement thank um, you although it's probably not fully retirement since you're still going to be doing some kind of work so oh I'm always working yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, goodness. but but you know it's a good thing to be able to do what you want to do you know and, and what you love um, during yes. the time that you weren't doing music fully and you were doing law enforcement, though, how are you uh, honing your craft or were you even, you know, thinking about it as much during that time, um, you know, like, or, or were you even training or, or anything like that as far as singing was concerned? I was doing concerts. I was putting okay. out records. I was we're doing both simultaneously. Okay. Okay. So I, I never stopped the music. Um, everything that I did within the music industry before I started my law enforcement career as far as a supporting role was done simultaneously while I was working law enforcement. So I didn't sleep much. And then when <laughs> I became a solo artist, I was doing that simultaneously as, you know, a, a sergeant mm -hmm. and having to juggle that. And of course, home life, because I'm also, you know, a family woman. So it was a lot of juggling, not much sleep, but you know, if you want something, you have to work for it. It's just Absolutely. that simple. So you get what you put in. Um, and I wanted to work to a point where I knew that, that I secured myself a really nice cushion. Mm -hmm. So I did that. And now, you know, I could do what I want to do. You do what you have to do in order to do what you want to do. So, That's right. um, so I'm blessed to be able to, you know, have my pension have benefits for the rest of my life and mm -hmm. still do what I want to do. 
um because having financial security is important yeah so um yeah so you know i i found a way to balance them both and then when it got to the point where i felt like i just wanted to just do music then i cleaned the slate for that and yeah. and here we are yeah that's awesome though mm -hmm. I, I love that um you know the fact of following your dream for real no matter what um, I think some people really get lost, you know, in the cycle of life of just trying to provide, you know, so, mm -hmm. and it's easy to, don't get me wrong, and I, I'm not blaming any of those people, but I'm just saying those who have the determination to really go out and do it and continue to do it, you know, I love to see that happen, uh, especially when you have a story like yours, uh, and you're able to put out the music and people are able to respond, and you're able to see all that stuff happen in real time, so I love that. Yeah. Um, and I think Thank CS you. is a wonderful song. I love the song. Uh, matter of Thank fact, you. It's, it was smooth. I loved it. I'll say yes, say yes. I love that. So, <laughs> Thank you. Yes, no problem. Did you did you um, come out of the gate already though, like intending to have an, a, a specific sound already, or was that just something that came up? It's um that was pretty organic because you know. Michael Westbrook, he did the music. I'm writing, mm -hmm. you know, and um, it actually started as a poem with um, one of my friends from high school, Kenneth Bob, mm -hmm. and he brought the idea to me, and then I wound up writing, you know, the first verse and the hook, and then using the elements, you know, from his poem and stuff like that, and um, so. It was just organic, really. Um, I don't know whether, I, I can't say it was an intention. It was just something that, you know, it came from the heart and that's what we got. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that definitely yeah. makes sense. But for mm -hmm. songwriting uh, for you, when did that start or did you have to work at that? Was it, did it come naturally for you? Um, you know, what, at what age did it start for you? I mean, I, I, I was writing raps when I was in, like grade school and junior high school and <laughs> you know I, like I thought I was like a rapper and stuff it's so silly but um but and I, I always wrote poetry and stuff so I think it's kind of like a natural progression yeah um it just depends um on what's inspiring the song or you know the music or it just depends like sometimes it comes really easy like the song I just finished writing the other day it was just like one two three mm -hmm. it's just having to sit down and be still you know and for me that's kind of difficult because I always have so much going on so that that's more the difficulty is the time yeah okay you know time and mood yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. definitely definitely so uh as far as your influences uh as far as music is concerned uh, who were some of those people? Because I know your father was also in the music business uh, as well. Yes. Uh, yes but who indeed. were some of those people and uh, how did his being in the music business affect you? Well, I was, you know, a baby and he was singing all the time and it was always music in the house. So that was a huge influence because I grew up with nothing but music around me. And, you know, him rehearsing in the house, playing the trumpet. <laughs> and you know the real to reels going and he'll be recording stuff right there in the living room so um I grew just a love and an appreciation for the sound of the human voice very early and it's one of to me one of my favorite instruments mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. the human voice is just so much that could be done with it and I have a, a, a huge respect for like all forms of singing and um, he had a huge influence on me musically, of course, because my first experiences of music was, you know, from my parents. And right. I was blessed enough to have, you know, my mother, she's big into music as well, but she does not sing. Okay. But having him, you know, and he was just so, um, such a perfectionist mm -hmm. as well, which made, made me the same way. Um, so that was huge. And, you know, outside of that, the people, you know, people that you guys know, <laughs> um, Steph Stephanie Mills was a huge influence. Um, Melissa Morgan. Uh, oh, yes. 
and um, Celine Dion. Um, Gladys Knight is one of my big favorites. Um, Definitely. Brian McKnight, Luther Vandross, um, Patti LaBelle. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I can go on and on. I mean, these, are, these are the songs and like a soundtrack of my life growing up. And, yeah. you know, even further back, I won't reach back that far, but because I don't know how what your audience, you know, demographic <laughs> is, but, you know, it's, you know, Lena Horne and it's just, it's just so many mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. great voices out there that help to shape who I am. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, that's awesome though. But I like, you know, to have uh, well-rounded people to be able to talk to uh, as far as, you know, music is concerned, because I love music, you know, uh, and pretty much everybody who watches me uh, should know that by now. Uh, mm -hmm. I had people from the 60s all the way up until the 90s, all the way up until, no, to present day probably. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, it, it just goes that deep. Like I was just listening to some uh, Barbara Mason the other night and I was just like, mm -hmm. you know, it's crazy. Um, I was showing somebody how um, we were, uh, how people use samples um in in uh oh yeah what's her name Ari <laughs> Lennox is, is using a uh, Shirley Brown's uh blessed is the woman uh that has a man like mine in her new song you right, know so right. just stuff like that you know and, and really going into real records and R&B records for real um uh, mm -hmm. you know it's the stuff that I kind of like to listen to uh now things have changed of course but it's starting to show slowly but surely come back I see so yeah, that's the kind of stuff that I like to listen to and hear. So I'm always, you know, glad when somebody comes on here and they want to talk about old school music because that's what I like. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, that's my roots. Um, there are, you know, there's new artists that I like as well. And right. I find an appreciation for um, well, Usher's not that new, but like, I think he's great. <laughs> um, there's a lot of like mainstream vocalists that that I like, you know, and yeah. Um, people don't realize that a pop vocal is hard too. That's a mm -hmm. hard vocal. That's you know? right. So you have to give them their credit. Like, okay, we belt and that's awesome. <laughs> but, you know, the flip side of singing, it's a different style of singing. It's a different craft in itself, a different sect, a different genre, and it's different areas of your voice that you have to use to do that. So, um, yeah, I just, like I said, I love the human voice. So I, I have an appreciation for a lot of different styles of singing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's evident. It's evident too, because, you know, in the singles that you've released or the projects period uh, that you released, there's, you know, obviously a difference, especially with the new single. It's not the same as obviously Say Yes. So, right. um, but it's important to be able to try different things and see what works for you and what doesn't work for you, you know, and, and right. not stay in a box. So mm -hmm. you are already doing something that's, that's, you know, right on the right track for what you I'm sure want to do eventually. Yes. Yes, indeed. But I also want to just say, um, as far as Red Bottoms and Lingerie is concerned, of course, that single has been up. Uh, out already this year um are you anticipating a full album release or mixtape or ep or what absolutely going oh my goodness i have a lot going on um <laughs> i have a, a mixtape that i'm currently working on that'll be coming next year okay i'm working on my ep now okay <laughs> that red bottoms and lingerie will be a part of that collection of music and i also have a jazz album Okay. So I have three different projects that I'm currently working on. So there'll be a lot of new music next year. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy about that. Um, then I have my, sorry, I have my Christmas album that's out too. Okay. And the Christmas album mm -hmm. is available now? Yeah, everywhere. Okay. Worldwide. Absolutely. Monique Nicole Christmas. All right. And all of the music is available on all streaming platforms. Yes, it is. All right. Mm -hmm. So everybody, make sure you go check out that new music um, and stay tuned for what Miss Monique Nicole has next. Um, but before you go, just let everybody know where they can find you as far as social media is concerned and your website, if you have one. Yes, indeed. Um, MoniqueNicoleMusic.com, mm -hmm. which is, is soon to be MoniqueNicole.com. Okay. So I'm doing a rebuild of my site now, but they could still hit that landing page. Okay. 
Um, you can also just Google me. That's probably like the easiest way to, to find me. It's Monique common spelling nicole is Mm n-i-k-k-o-l-e so i'm at monique nicole n-i-k-k-o-l-e everywhere that's on twitter that's on facebook ig you name it you reach out to me actually i i get back to everybody if you reach out to me too so i'm pretty interactive Mm -hmm. yes indeed ladies and gentlemen this is none other than miss monique nicole herself thank you so much again Thank you so much, Tony, for having me. No problem at all.